Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently I received an email from a photographer telling me that he's having a problem with Photoshop. Every now and then when he opens an image up into Photoshop, he's getting a warning, an embedded color profile mismatch warning. He's wondering what that is and what he can do about it. Well, over the years I've often received this question. So I decided to do this video and in this video I'll tell you what it is and what you should do about it. Now as you can see I have Photoshop open. I'm going to open up an Adobe stock image that I have on my desktop. This one right here. When I try to open it, you'll see I get this warning, embedded profile mismatch. It's telling me that this document, this Adobe stock document, has an embedded color profile that does not match the current RGB working space. The embedded color profile, this is the profile that's embedded in the image, is ProPhoto RGB. My Photoshop workspace is sRGB. Then it's asking me what to do. Now before I get into this a little more, let's talk about these workspaces. What are workspaces? Well, color workspaces. There are hundreds of color workspaces, but there's mainly three that we use in photography. Those are ProPhoto RGB, Adobe RGB, and sRGB. Now each of them has a pool of colors, let's say. Some of those pools are bigger than other pools. For example, the ProPhoto RGB is the biggest pool of colors. It has the most colors in it. The Adobe RGB is the next biggest. So it's smaller than ProPhoto RGB. It has less colors than ProPhoto RGB, but it still has a lot of colors, all right? <laughs> next is sRGB. That's the smallest of the three. That is the smallest pool of colors. Now the problem you could get into here is if you have an image that has colors using the ProPhoto RGB workspace. That's the biggest pool of colors. And you convert it to, let's say, the smallest of the three, that's sRGB. And some of those colors that are in the image, that are in ProPhoto RGB, aren't in sRGB. Well, Photoshop has to do something with those colors that aren't available in the sRGB workspace. So it will shift them to a color that is available in the sRGB workspace. Now, most of all, most of the time, uh, this doesn't matter. You won't notice it, really. Or if you do notice it, it won't be that drastic of a difference that is going to make you scrap the image or anything like that. But there can be times where it's important. For example, let's say you're doing um, advertising photography and your client is Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola Red is a very specific red in their logo that they have trademarked with their logo. It has to be that exact red. And let's say in other applications, you're working on images that are in the ProPhoto RGB workspace, and you have to do something in Photoshop, and you bring that image over into Photoshop, and let's say you just convert it to sRGB. You run the risk of it shifting that red to a shade of red that isn't acceptable. All right, so that's where it could be important that you use the same workspace throughout your workflow. So in that instance, you'd want to choose this first one. Use the embedded profile. Make sure you're keeping that same profile throughout your entire workflow. Now, there is an instance, in some instances, where you may want to convert the document's colors to the workspace. Um, for example, you can see I have my, work, my working workspace set up for sRGB. Typically, I don't print images much anymore. Um, I more often send them to a lab to be printed. Almost all labs require the sRGB workspace, including the one I use. So when I'm done in Photoshop, I'm going to be exporting the image in the sRGB workspace. So when the image is in Photoshop and I'm looking at it, I prefer it to be in the workspace that I'm ultimately going to be exporting it in. So that's why I use the workspace sRGB inside of Photoshop. So if I'm ultimately going to be printing this image, I want to convert it. I want to use that second one. Also, sRGB being the smallest pool of colors, you could be sure, pretty sure, that if you even export that JPEG to share online, that it will look the same from phone to phone, computer monitor to computer monitor, because almost all phones and all computer monitors could reproduce the sRGB color space but not all of them could faithfully reproduce, let's say, the ProPhoto RGB space. So if you have a ProPhoto RGB JPEG and someone opens it up on their phone, your phone's going to shift colors maybe because it, doesn't, it can't reproduce all those colors faithfully. So your image may look different 
a Pro Photo RGB or Adobe RGB image may look different from phone to phone, computer monitor to computer monitor. So in those instances too, I want to use the sRGB workspace. Now this third one, discard the embedded profile, don't color manage. That means Photoshop's just gonna arbitrarily choose colors and some color might be in one workspace, another color might be in a different workspace. And I cannot think of a reason why anyone would choose that third one. So you're gonna to wanna to choose one of those first two. Now to continue with our example here, I'm gonna use this first one, use the embedded color profile. So we're going to keep the color profile that is with the image and disregard my workspace profile, my Photoshop workspace profile. So we'll click okay. Now you see it opened the image fine, right? Let's look at the tab up here. We have the file name, and then we have RGB. It's an RGB image, and we have 8. That's 8-bit depth, all right? JPEGs are 8-bit depth. Then notice this asterisk, and the asterisk is inside of the parentheses. That's telling us something. That is telling us that the color profile that we're looking at is different than our default Photoshop color workspace. Well, why does it have to tell us that? Well, it really doesn't matter much, but let's say we were doing compositing and I wanted to take a piece of this image and put it inside of another image that I have opened up in a different tab. If that other tab has an image in it that is sRGB, you wouldn't see that asterisk there at all. This tab has this image in it, which isn't sRGB, so we see that asterisk. So if I try to take a chunk of this, it's warning us, hey, your color profiles aren't the default Photoshop profile. Make sure you know this. Let's, let me just show you what will happen if you try to do this. Let's go to open, we'll open another image, and this one's going to be an sRGB image. And you'll notice I don't get a warning. Let's go back to our original image that is Pro Photo RGB, and let's just, now this isn't, um, a demonstration on how to do selections in Photoshop. So I'm just going to do this very quickly. All right. So we'll do that. All right. Just like that. Now I have her clipped out. All right. And I have a mask. So I'm just going to apply the layer mask. Now I want to put her in that other scene. So I'm going to get the move tool, hit the V key. I'm going to click and drag her up to the tab of the sRGB and drop her on here. It's telling me I have a paste profile mismatch. The source is Pro Photo RGB. The destination is working RGB. Well, to convert, convert it to preserve the color appearance, or don't convert to preserve the color numbers. That means that Pro Photo has more colors in it. So I'll preserve that number of colors if I choose that second one, but it's not going to necessarily match the colors that are in this room if I wanted it to match certain colors. So I'm going to cancel. So you just see how you get this warning. Now what you can do is we can go over here and we could convert this now to sRGB if I wanted to. So to do that, we go up to edit and we go to convert to profile. And the default pro, you can see this pro photo RGB, the default workspace profile will be the very top one. So it's our sRGB. So I'll convert it there and I'll click OK. It's converted. Now look at the tab. Notice that asterisk is still there, but it's outside of the parentheses. That's telling us now that this image that we're looking at is matching the working color profile of my workspace, but the actual file that is on my desktop doesn't match it. it the, the, the file is, um, is different. Well, now if I still if I take this and I drag it up to this tab and put it on here, you can see I don't get that warning anymore, right? But if we go back over here, you can see that we still have this asterisk here. Well, what if I wanted to use this like next week or three weeks from now yeah, or whatever, and I, I don't want to get this mismatch anymore. I want to make sure that the image that is saved on my desktop now is sRGB. All I need to do is save this. Um, so if we click save and it's a PSD file on my desktop, click save and you can see now the asterisk is gone. That's telling us I saved it. That's all. So now we saved it. Now, all this problem we're having with 
these color mismatch warnings coming up. Um, maybe you just don't want to see it at all. Well, you could control that. Go up to Edit and go down to Color Settings. Now you can see right here is workspaces. As far as my RGB workspace, this is what we're looking at on the screen. CMYK is when we're printing, but let's stay up here with the RGB. I mentioned I prefer to use the sRGB workspace. You could use whatever you like. I use sRGB again because I send my images off to a lab and the lab requires sRGB. So when I'm working in Photoshop, I want to see sRGB and because I'm ultimately going to export it as sRGB. Um, you could use whatever you want. But down here, these profile mismatches, this is, what do you want to do? Well, when I opened up the image and it gave me that warning, if I don't want to see that warning and I just want to use that first choice, use the embedded color profile, then I would uncheck that box. Also, when I drag the image over to the other tab and I got the warning when pasting, maybe I don't want to see that warning either. So I could undo that. So I'll click OK. Now, let's open up another image. This third image that I'm opening up is Profoto RGB as well. All right. I'm going to open it up and you'll notice now because I changed those settings, I'm not getting the warning, but the asterisk is inside of the parentheses. So that's telling me that the color profile for this image is different than my workspace profile. Now, again, if I wanted to, I'm not going to, but if I wanted to clip her out and drag her over to this other tab, with the living room scene in it, the um, because I turn that warning off too, it will automatically just use that first option, which is to just convert the colors basically so that it matches the scene, uh, the scene's workspace. So those are the options you have in Photoshop. That's what that box means. And again, it really I don't think is super critical to change your workspace in mid-flow, more often you're not going to actually see the changes in the colors. Um, like here, I did see a little bit of change when I converted this to sRGB. I saw some change in her skin tone a little bit. Let's see if you see it in the video. I'm going to change it back. So we'll go up to Edit and we'll go to Convert to Profile. Let's move it over here. And I'll change this back to Profoto RGB and we'll click OK. Now, as soon as it, look at her face, click OK. I could see on my monitor just some slight changes to the skin tones, just a bit, but it's really very, very minor. So that is all this color space mismatch stuff. Um, I'm sorry if this sounded very confusing. I can't think of a better way to present it. If I ever do think of a better way to present this information, I'll definitely do another video. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>